Hi. Hi. Hey, how are you? Great. How are you? Good. It's so good to see you. And I'm so happy to have you on today. Today, for those of you who are just tuning in, thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is Dr. Terry Van Alstein. She's our in-house naturopathic doctor, and she is a wealth of information. I'm so excited today because we're going to talk about stress. And Dr. T, Dr. Terry Van Alstein, like, Right now, we're in the most stressful time, probably of our entire lives, right? For a lot of us, everything has changed in the last few weeks. So today we wanna to talk about stress and how it impacts our health, how it impacts our fat loss results, and also constructive ways that you can manage your stress. So Dr. T, let's dive in. Okay, so we're going through the stressful time. Can you talk about the hormones that are caused by stress and also the impact that stress has on our bodies? Yes. So the hormones that are uh, secreted when we're under stress, and they're secreted by our adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands are walnut-sized glands that sit above the kidneys mm -hmm. in the back. And it's adrenaline and cortisol that are secreted. And Cortisol, that pesky hormone, cortisol. Yeah. Well, they both go hand in hand, and they're both bad bad news. They're very corrosive and damaging to the body's tissues. So, you know, short term, it's not a problem because, you know, we need to react to danger. That's what we're mm -hmm. programmed to do. Mm -hmm. So our heart increases rate, breathing increases, and our blood is shunted to all our muscles to prepare us to run or fight the danger. Mm -hmm. And every time we exercise as well, like we release a little bit of cortisol, but it's in those minimal levels that are totally fine, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. But it's the long-term stress, the long-term exposure to adrenaline and cortisol that causes the damage. It damages the body's tissues, glands, organs, and tissues, and it ages us. So it's kind of like free radical damage, internal and external. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. the problem. That's the problem. And-, and, and you know, all of the effects that it impacts, like it makes us feel stressed all the time. It makes us anxious. It causes, you know, some people have panic attacks, mm -hmm. nervousness, insomnia. Mm -hmm. um, lots of So on that note, what are some of the physical signs of stress? Um, and because, you know, if it's going, if it's ongoing, people sometimes don't even know that they're actually stressed out, right? But what are those physical signs? So insomnia, depression, fatigue, anxiety, headaches, mm -hmm. uh, digestive distress, upset stomach. Some people have irritable bowel syndrome. So alternating constipation, diarrhea, or one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, peptic ulcers, gastric ulcers can happen. And just irritability. Yes. You know, we should shouldn't be irritable. We should be happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. And, you know, I relate to this because um, on a personal level, when I was going through probably the most traumatic thing in my life, which was a divorce, I had irritable bowel syndrome. I'm like, I, I was, um, I mean, my bowel movements were not normal. <laughs> and that was my first sign. And I had anxiety as well, but I just thought that that was normal, right? And I was just mm -hmm. dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis, but not really dealing with it and not realizing that this was not normal. Mm. Um, okay, let's talk about cortisol and adrenaline. Now, can you talk a little bit about how they affect our weight loss? Yes, so cortisol and adrenaline cause weight gain in two ways. Mm -hmm. First of all, they cause the secretion of insulin and insulin makes us crave carbohydrates. And secondly, they lower the feel-good hormones in the brain, the serotonin and dopamine. And when those hormones are low, we also crave things that build them up again, which again is simple carbohydrates, mm -hmm. chocolate, uh, salt, red wine. So Interesting, like chocolate. So it's not in our heads, right? We, we want that chocolate when we're feeling a little bit down, a little bit depressed, and like we need something to up our mood. So and we crave stress. that chocolate. And it's actually like it's a biological um, thing. Like it's, it's no, no, not, no. It, yeah. Which so the stress comes first, and that's what causes the craving. Mm -hmm. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to basically be causing cravings, um, because of it's stimulating insulin, but also because 
uh, wait, it's causing weight gain because it's stimulating insulin, but also because of the cravings, which are going to cause us to want to eat more and not the good stuff. Because they're fattening, they're acidic, they're high calorie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially and the salt causes water retention, which makes us swell. So if we are struggling with cravings, it can be a direct correlation to, to feeling stressed. Definitely. Being stressed. So that's another sign. Right. And, and okay. So we got to get, we got to get stress under control. If fat loss is our goal, we have to get stress under control and stop that cortisol. Sure. And even if people are eating perfectly and exercising every day, mm-hmm. if they're feeling a significant amount of stress, mm-hmm. they will not lose the weight in the belly. Yeah. And so it, so it's, so it actually, um, it, compounds in certain parts of the body as well so it's not just right so belly is one of the belly fat belly fat is a a, that's the cortisol area huh i did not know that that's very interesting now so what are the dangers long term with high levels of cortisol and adrenaline in our body dangers are well constantly feeling uh anxious depressed um, but eventually it's adrenal exhaustion Mm-hmm. So we flatline our energy it just crashes and it doesn't come back. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if adrenal glands are there. Yeah. And I wonder if people are, are getting there now, right? Because we've been dealing now with COVID for, is it like seven weeks? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and so we can function off of adrenaline for the first little bit, but then um, that depletion happens. And I, now I would assume that that adrenal fatigue could be setting in. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about, cause what I love about you is that you heal your patients through food. And this is great because we all have access to food right now. So I want to talk about specific foods that first of all, negatively affect the adrenal glands. So the top foods that non-foods really, that <laughs> negatively affect the adrenal glands are the simple carbohydrates, you know, sugar, alcohol, caffeine, junk food, processed foods. So they damage all the body's organs and glands and tissues, including the adrenal glands. Mm -hmm. Always ones to avoid. And unfortunately, ones people crave when they're stressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is a lot of people ask because in Feel for Fat Loss, when we start out, we go for 30 days and we go very, very clean. We have a food no-no list and we remove all those foods on the no-no list. We reduce caffeine to one cup of coffee per day, but we reduce uh, or we take out the simple carbs and the sugar and the junk and the processed foods because we ultimately want to cleanse our body and heal those organs. So if there is that adrenal fatigue, this is going to, uh, to, to basically help it. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. So now what can we do now to lower our adrenaline and our cortisol? So first of all, we have to identify what are the causes of the stress and change them if we can, eliminate them if we can. But if we can't, then we have to change our mindset because that is the one thing we can control that no one else has control over. And that is our beliefs and perceptions and our thoughts. Mm-hmm. So if we can change them to positive every step of the way, that is the most important thing for sure. Yeah. And when Um, we we had this conversation in our VIP group, just the other day, you said, take it one day at a time, like stay positive and take it one day at a time. And for some of us, it's like, it's easier said than done, but this, you're right. Like our mindset is one thing that we can absolutely manage. And then it could be one minute at a time. Every minute of the day, mm-hmm. you just focus on the positive. Mm-hmm. Don't let yourself get angry. Or if you do, release it and back to the positive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that you have some specific things that are going to help you get to that positive state. Yes. So um, identify the negative coping patterns and try and replace them with positive ones. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Foods or whatever. So, so wait, I want to jump in. Like that means like for those of you who are stressed, who have those cravings, work on those cravings and eliminate those foods because it's just going to be a vicious cycle. That's right. That's a negative coping pattern right there. And drinking, um, right. I mean, Mm -hmm. alcohol sales are up 40% in BC alone. Yep. They sure did not close those. It's a coping mechanism for a lot of us. So we need to become aware of that. Um, especially if your stress is not going to serve you right now. 
That's right. So we need to be doing relaxation exercises every day. So deep breathing, meditation, yoga, um, exercise every day. That's been proven to be, you know, the meditation and the exercise have scientifically been proven to be the most effective things to lower cortisol and adrenaline. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know what? That's like my sanity. I tell everyone every day, I'm like, my exercise is not even to give me results. It's, it's about my sanity and about coping. Um, talking about meditation and breathing, we're going to do a breathing exercise together today, right? For everyone? Okay. Should we save that for the end? Yes. Okay, great. So also working on improving communication. Mm. Because a lot of stress is caused by lack of communication. So just being nice and open and honest about how you feel about things will help to reduce stress. It's true, especially when we're like living with our partners, right, full time, which we're not used to, and our kids full time. Um, so I, I agree with that. And, uh, you know, eliminate the caffeine, the alcohol, refined carbohydrates for sure. Increase the potassium to sodium ratio. So that means plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and avoiding the junk foods, the processed foods, all of that. And eating in a relaxed environment and having planned meals mm. and having a routine. That is super important as well. Yeah. You know, wake up, make your bed, meditate, just, you know, try to stick to a routine. Yeah. The body needs a routine. The adrenal glands are desperate for a routine. Wow. That's what heals them. Very interesting. Um, and I know that we're going to talk about um, specific foods next. Um, mm. Can we jump into that? Sure. Okay. So we've talked about the foods that we want to avoid. Um, now, what are our foods that actually support the adrenal glands? There's certain foods, uh, certain sprouts, microgreens, yeah. and herbs that support the adrenal glands. And the foods are parsley and wild blueberries. So you can buy the frozen wild blueberries. Yeah. Uh, sprouts oh, by the way, are red. What's that? Costco has them frozen. Yes. Wild. Yeah. Uh, the sprouts are radish, broccoli, fenugreek, kale, beans, and lentils. And those so are sprouts. Those can be sprouted at home easily or you buy nice. sprouts. Yeah. Okay. Microgreens. They're right now, they are in um, supermarkets. I've seen them in the microgreens too. Right. Good. So the microgreens, super easy to grow as well at home, um, but you can buy them pea shoots sunflower greens and the herbs that support the adrenal glands are red clover raspberry leaf nettle leaf and ginseng mm -hmm. and, and those uh, herbs you can brew in a tea oh great okay yes and raspberry leaf and, tea very um common yeah you can buy that right yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um now uh, one quick thing about microgreens because i'm such a huge fan for so many reasons you can add them to your smoothies you can add them to your salads you can add them as like garnish for all of your foods they, they support our adrenal glands but for those of you who don't know microgreens are basically the um you're cutting them at a at their immature state right so they're they're not like the full grown so it's like a full grown kale looks like this microgreens are just like the little microgreens babies yeah babies and you get 20 percent more nutrients when you have them at that state like that's amazing that's right. so it's, you're not They're only loaded. like helping your adrenal glands specifically but you're also getting those extra nutrients so super easy to grow from home super cheap to grow from home right you just get some seeds exactly. and um for those of you who want to know how to grow microgreens let me know and i could do a little demo for you on instagram stories maybe you can too um dr t but yeah, yeah. okay so going moving on um can specific nutrients help to lower our stress hormones yes they can certain ones can and we can get them in foods but just remember that soil is depleted of the minerals mm. and so if it's non-organic the amount of vitamins and minerals are much less, mm. but, um, but definitely include these foods for sure. Okay. So vitamin C, and that's in the citrus fruits and bell peppers, B5, which is in whole grains, uh, legumes, cauliflower, broccoli, salmon, yam, and tomatoes. Okay. B6 is in meats, organ meats, 
poultry, fish, egg yolk, soy, dried beans, peanuts, and walnuts. Great. Okay. Zinc is in oysters, herring, milk, meat, egg yolks, and beef. Yeah. And magnesium is in nuts, legumes, whole grains, breads, soy, seafood, dark green leafy vegetables. Okay, great. And I mean, this is really like the feel for fat loss menu. Um, if you guys want this uh, list, by the way, just let me know and I can post in the comments below. So vitamin C though, bell peppers, bell peppers are crazy high in, vit in vitamin C and citrus fruits. So things like oranges, lemon, we talked about the other day, like cut up your pieces of lemon and put them in water and you're going to get that same benefit as well. You can drink lemon water all day, which will detox the body. Um, but you're also going to get your, your vitamin C. Okay, great. And then, yeah, I think what would be, could, can you give us like an idea of like, would you maybe grab one of these and try and have one of these in every meal or across the day? Like, how would you do that? That would be a good idea, actually. Yeah. So try and incorporate one from each category throughout yeah. the day. Throughout the day. Okay. Because then you're getting the spectrum of nutrients. Yeah. So, I mean, right there, we've got like B5s. Those are your broccoli, cauliflower. I mean, that one's easy. We can have that with our, with our dinners, right? Bell peppers, we can have in a salad. Um, B6, that is the soy, dried beans, peanuts, walnuts. That one could maybe be, um, you know, topping of our, of our food. Snacks, mm -hmm. peanuts, walnuts are great snacks. Um, zinc, was um zinc so oysters herring that one's harder for me i'm trying to think it's hard. <laughs> it's harder to get. And, and the soil is super depleted of zinc that's the mm -hmm. problem mm -hmm. okay so that would maybe the one that you need to take as a supplement and right. zinc has been proven zinc and selenium are the top two for boosting the immune system mm -hmm. and selenium mushrooms right yep selenium and mushrooms mushrooms okay that's good, good. This is what I love about you so much is that like you were giving us like concrete ways that we can heal our bodies and heal our adrenal glands or right, reduce cortisol levels through the food that we're eating. This is so great. Um, so lastly, I want to talk about how to lower that stress hormone, cortisol, and support the adrenal glands. What should we be doing? So we need to be do doing some self-care every day. We need to be as I mentioned, meditating, doing deep breathing exercises, and the Iceman, if you look up the Iceman technique, which I think we're going to do, yeah, is really effective at yeah. lowering stress. Um, exercise, of course. Listening to positive messages, positive books. Um, I listen to audiobooks with like A Course in Miracles by Alan Cohen, anything by Marianne Williamson, the Astonishing Power of Emotions by Esther and Jerry Hicks. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many great ones mm -hmm. just to keep your mind in the positive. Totally. And for those of you watching, if you have a spiritual book that you want to share with us that like has really spoken to you and really helped you, please share it in the comments below so we can kind of build our library for our community. So before we, we leave today's conversation, I'd love to do that breathing exercise that you did in our VIP group because I think sure. it's such a valuable one. Maybe we could do five repetitions, but explain how it works. So this is by the Iceman. So uh, this so we're doing a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And the, what he teaches is to do 30 of them. And then you finish on the out breath and you don't take a breath in. You hold it on the out breath as long as you can. Okay. And every time you do the sequence, you're going to be able to hold that out breath longer and longer. So, um, and what it does is it, it calms you. It changes your biology, basically. Amazing. And he's able to, through this technique, spend over an hour in ice water. You know, because you know? of that. Huh. So it, your body becomes more, you know, you can live a lot longer. Yes. Um, yes. By doing this sort of thing. Sorry, I'm just, I'm trying to get our comments. There's comments coming through. <laughs> okay, well, um, so let's demonstrate five, um, five breaths. So pretend we're going to end at 30 and what we would, what would happen from the first breath to the, to the 30th okay. breath. So okay, I'm going to do it with you. Start with the in breath.
Is our last one. Okay, so basically for that last one, you're holding it as long as you can before you exhale. It's so crazy, Dr. T, because you inhale, you hold the, hold the inhale before, right. That's right. It's crazy because that was only five breaths, but it immediately calms me right down. And it's so, it's, so biologically, it's helping your nervous system, right? It's tricking your nervous system into to thinking that you're going to sleep. That's right. It puts you into parasympathetic. Yeah. And so it's just like immediately will lower your cortisol levels, lower the adrenaline. Like that's amazing that through breathing, we can actually change our biology, but it's such a simple technique. So if you guys are sitting right now at your desk and your kiddos are running around and they're not homeschooling, <laughs> like you're trying to manage it all, just sit and take those few breaths. If you can't get to 30, do five for now. Um, but I think that's a really great place to start along with all the other stuff that we talked about today. So Dr. Terry Van Elstein, it is so wonderful to chat to you. You bring so much value and I really appreciate it. Um, for those of you watching, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you're catching this on the replay, please type in replay. We love seeing who watches our videos. And if you have any questions for Dr. T, please post in the comments below and we will get back to you. All right, thanks so much. Thanks so much, Terry. We'll see you soon. Sure. Bye, guys. Bye.